Once again, you are welcome guests of the most thrilling organization in America, the World Adventurers Club. Here we find men from all corners of the globe, men who have braved every experience from the polar seas to the sweltering tropics. Among all the members of the World Adventurers Club, there is no man more interesting than Lieutenant Jack Palmer. You may have met Secret Service men before, but we'll wager you've never met a man who was a member of the Secret Service of the Chinese Republic. A white man gambling his wits against death in a yellow man's country. At this moment, we find Lieutenant Palmer surrounded by several club members, and they've persuaded him to tell one of his adventures in the land of the Golden Dragon. And the club invites you to pull up your chair and hear this story of modern China. Give a man a horse, he can ride. Give a man a boat, he can sail. And his rank and wealth, his rank and health. say, Jack, old man, they tell me you've been having a lot of fun over in China. Yes, I was there for three years. I was the only white man who belonged to the Chinese diplomatic corps. Mm. I learned a great deal about the oriental mind. What was your business, chiefly spying? I believe I could say that. Spy and diplomat and soldier, and propagandist and quartermaster and field general and oh, a little bit of everything else. <laughs> China has been in a frightful turmoil. Mm -hmm. but someday she's coming out of it. If she can ever become unified, that is, become nationally conscious, she's liable to be one of the greatest powers that the world has ever seen. Look out for the old dragon when that day arrives. You must have had some wild adventures in the three years of Chinese political and military strife. I suppose at least a half a dozen times you beat death by a nose. Just about. Mm. One of the narrowest escapes I ever had was the time I had to get the Manchurian Limited from Pekin to Mukden with a load of gunpowder and dynamite. Great Scott! And what made it really a tough job was the fact that an army of rebels was waiting for that train. Oh. They knew it carried high explosives, and their one desire was to blow it to atoms, and me with it. Oh. I had to see to it that this train load of dynamite, enough to blow up all China, was taken safely through a hostile territory. Yes? Yeah. I didn't know what minute the rebel artillery would plant a shell right in the middle of my car load of TNT. Or I didn't know but what they had wrecked the train. And if we crashed with a load like that, oh. well, you'd have heard the roar in New York City. <laughs> yeah, it was a sweet job. It's a wonder you ever went through with it. Well, orders were orders. Yeah. You see, the rebels were winning victories in Manchuria. Mm -hmm. They were closing in on Mukden. Now, if the government troops lost Mukden, they lost the key city of the whole province of Manchuria. We had to save that garrison at Mukden. And to save it, we had to re resupply their ammunition. It was my job to see that the train got there. I can tell you I used everything from prayers to psychology. Well, I've had some rough assignment, but that's the limit. What did you do about it, Jack? Well, frankly, I didn't think I had a chance in the world. But I told Dick Fawcett the trouble I was in. Uh, you know Dick, don't you? Yes. He's on the North China News. Uh, that's the boy. Yes. He's an assistant editor now. Uh -huh. The paper prints uh, both English and Chinese. Yeah. He handles the diplomatic news in English. Well, tell me, Jack, uh, did that fellow... Fawcett have an idea that he could really outwit the rebels? Yes, he had an idea. We sat up all night discussing it. I didn't think it was practical, but, well, I was willing to try anything. My train was ready, and I planned to leave with it from Pekin at midnight. But that day, I met Dick Fawcett again, this time at the Pekin Railroad Station. We had our last conference before my departure, and, and we had with him a young girl. Jack, let me present Miss Lily Singh, 
Miss Singh, Lieutenant Jack Palmer of New York, China, and Kingdom Come. How do you do, Lieutenant? I am very happy, Miss Singh. We've no time to waste with introductions. Just remember this. Miss Lily Singh is the daughter of Lee Sen Singh, who planned to blow up the Manchurian Limited at King Chow. Her father is one of the big men of China. But unfortunately, he's on the opposite side of the military fence from you, Jack. So I understand. Now, Lee Sen Singh has sent his daughter to an American university. He wants her to learn the inside stuff about our civilization. And Miss Singh has returned to China unbeknown to Papa. Isn't that the case, Lily? I have been to America. And just a few days ago, I landed in China. My father does not know I have returned. I go to join him in Manchuria. And she leaves on the Manchurian Limited at midnight. Uh -huh. Isn't that very, very brilliant of me? Well, but this girl can't go on that train. We may be blown to bits. Ah, oh, that's where we outguess old Lee Sen Singh. With his own daughter on the Manchurian Limited, he won't dare blow it up. We've got him, Jack. Lily Singh is your safe passport to Mukden, Dynamite, and what have you. By God, it ought to work. I think it will work, gentlemen. At least, I am willing to try. Very good, Miss Singh. That train will leave at midnight. We shall arrive in... Phew! My! But that was checkmating Lee Sin Singh. Uh, but tell me this. How did you know his daughter was on the train? Oh, uh, Fawcett spread a scarehead across the North China News. Ah. He wrote a big story about Lee Sen Singh's daughter returning from America. Uh -huh. He made a front page story of it. Then he sent those papers up to Mukden by aeroplane. He knew that Lee Sen Singh would see it and that he would read about his daughter leaving on the Manchurian Limited. Mm. Uh, we figured we had him. And did you? Not quite. The scheme was great, only it didn't work. It started out perfectly. We left Pekin an hour early. There was only one passenger car. The other six cars were loaded with TNT, shells, gunpowder, and dynamite. Besides the train crew, there were eight uh, Chinese soldiers, Lily Singh, and myself. In spite of our hopes for a successful trip to Mukden, I was mighty nervous. Somehow I didn't trust Fawcett's idea any too much. All went well until three in the morning. Of course, sleep was impossible, so I sat up and talked with Lily Singh. I must have smoked 50 cigarettes as we sat and listened to the blast of the whistle and the hum of the wheels over the rail. Do you like America, Miss Singh? I think I would, Lieutenant. Someday I shall go there. Go there? Why, I thought you just came back. Oh, no. That was Mr. Fawcett's idea. I am not really Lily Singh. What? You're, you're not really Lily Singh? Not at all. The real Lily Singh is in America. But if we can make Lee Sen Singh think his daughter is here on this train, then we get safe to Mukden. Great Jesus Ghost, why, why didn't you tell me that before? Because Mr. Fawcett and I were afraid you might not wish to go on. But I thought you were really Lily Singh. Lee Sen Singh won't swallow this lie. Why, he'll know we're trying to bluff him. He'll never fall for it. He may. It is a gamble. If we doesn't work, we die. I too, Lieutenant, am a member of the Chinese Secret Service. We are pitting our cunning against Li Sun Singh. One side must win. Perhaps it will be us. Perhaps not. Why, I would never have let you risk it if I had known the truth. What's that? I heard shots. The rebels! Go hide! They're firing on the train! The rebels are firing on the train. Keep low, Miss Singh. Fire back, men. Do plenty. Stand by your faces. Here goes all or nothing. Great Scott, what an experience. And so we went through the thick of it. Yeah. It seems that Lee Sen Singh had swallowed the bait that Dick Fawcett prepared. Yes? Well, for several hours, he believed his daughter was on the Manchurian Limited. Mm. Then the ruse dawned upon him. He had given orders to his army to let that train proceed to Mukden. Then he countermanded them and offered a reward to the battalion that stopped and destroyed our train. Oh. But his orders were just a little too late. 
We had passed through most of the rebel country before they took a crack at us. And and you got to Mukden safely? We did. Oh. I turned that load of gunpowder over to the ammunition depot at Mukden and never lost a grain. For some close call, the cars were marred with bullets. Almost every window in our coach was broken. I lost four soldiers, but we made it. What became of Lily Singh? Oh, she's still in the diplomatic service in China. Oh. You'll hear of her someday. She's just about as cool a character as I've ever met. A kind of Chinese Matahari. But I had to get out of China. After that exploit, I was known to the rebels, and so I was of no more use to the government. But I'm going back someday. I want to see Dick Fawcett. Do you ever hear of him? Oh, yes. Yes, I have a cable right here. Oh. He says, uh, uh, China is a great country. Come on back. We all like it. Fifty million Chinamen can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someday, Dick Fawcett will return from China. And when he does, I insist that we make him a member of this club. Yes, of I course. Think it. I second uh, it. Sure I am yeah. it. And so am I. He'll tell us a story or two that'll leave us gasping. When he tells one, I want to be here. Now you'd better be here the next meeting. We're going to make Anderson tell one of his experiences. Oh, that's right. I have. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, we're no. counting on you. Yeah. We expect a knockout. <laughs> Hark to the deep and rumbling roar Shaking the earth with shot they pour From out the mouth of a ten-inch board Sing the thundering guns And now we say goodbye to the World Adventurers Club. And we invite you to be with us again and hear one of their members tell of his strange adventures in strange lands.